Okay. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us and for con continuing to follow our um, our mission and our program. Um, as you recall from yesterday, uh, we had a couple of challenges that we encountered, and that ultimately ended up in a uh, scrub of the um, of the first launch attempt for Artemis One. Uh, the day began with uh, some weather challenges that delayed the start of tanking. And then once we got into the uh, cryogenic loading of the vehicle, uh, we encountered a, um, a leak at the tail service mast umbilical on the hydrogen side at the 8-inch quick disconnect. Uh, the team managed to work its way through um, loading the, uh, the core stage and the upper stage in spite of that leak and we got a fully loaded vehicle and went into the uh, engine uh, bleed demonstration and, and attempted to uh, do the uh, thermal conditioning of the RS-25 engines, but we were unable to uh, get the engines within the, uh, the thermal conditions required to commit to launch. Uh, that was something that we knew about uh, coming out of the uh, agency flight readiness review, that uh, we would demonstrate that the first time in the uh, in the launch countdown, and we knew that that was a risk to uh, being able to successfully uh, attempt a, a launch that day. Uh, in combination with that, we we also had a uh, vent valve issue uh, on the uh, on the core stage, and and it was at that point that the team decided to uh, knock off the uh, launch attempt for that day. Uh, since that time, the team has rested, and uh, along with with thousands of others, our operations teams, our engineers, and and you folks on the call that we're here to follow the mission, uh, folks got a good night's sleep. We came back and uh, reviewed the data from Monday's launch attempt and uh, met today as a uh, mission management team uh, with our operations and engineer uh, engineering teams at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, we, here's what we agreed on. Uh, we agreed uh, on what was called option one, which was to operationally change the loading procedure uh, and start our engine chill down earlier. Uh, we also agreed to do some work at the pad uh, to um, address the, uh, the leak that we saw at the hydrogen tail service mast umbilical. And we also agreed to move our launch date to Saturday, September the 3rd. Uh, we are gonna reconvene the mission management team on Thursday, uh, September the 1st to review our flight rationale and our over, overall readiness. So that's where we got to today and I'll turn it back to you, Catherine. Thanks. Next, we will go to John Honeycutt from the SLS program. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, I know uh, we were all looking forward to uh, having a launch yesterday, and I can assure you there's nobody more ready than to go fly the rocket than I am. Uh, we did run into some issues that we couldn't uh, get dispositioned in real time yesterday and get to T0 in the, in the launch window. Um, as you've heard, we were doing... Uh, what we call a kickstart bleed test yesterday during and 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 uh, during during the test that that we had planned on doing doing um, during the previous wet dress um, we were unable to do that in the previous wet dress because uh, we ran into a hydrogen leak at the four inch bleed quick disconnect uh, that the team has since repaired. And so we're in the mode now of uh, processing the data that we got and, and updating um, our approach prior to the next launch attempt. And so I'm, I'm confident with where the team's headed. I've spent most of the most of the day with the team. The team's been looking at data last night and looking at data today. And based on what we've done uh, with the core stage and the four engines at the Stennis Space Center for the Green Run test, I've got a lot of confidence in the design of the rocket. Um, uh, for, for good reasons, we did implement some differences in what we did during during the Green Run. Uh, as of today, and based on the data that we've got, we think we can do something like what we did at uh, the Stennis Space Center and put ourselves in a better position for launch. Uh, if we'd have gotten this data in the wet dress rehearsal number four, uh, we would be doing exactly what we're doing now. And so, uh, you know, as as you heard Mike mention, and we talked it at our FRR, uh, this was something that we were unable to do in wet dress rehearsal number four, and uh, it, it was a validation test uh, that we needed to do. And so we've got a, a path forward 
uh, to get where we need to get to to support the next launch attempt.